So if you're just getting started in color grading, you might have found that it's kind of a confusing topic. I know I found it super confusing when I first started looking into color grading my raw footage, but over the last couple of years of making YouTube videos, I've learned a little bit about color grading and I've even released my own LUT. So currently this is what my footage looks like when it's ungraded, just straight out of the camera. And then this is what it looks like when it's been graded. So in today's video, I just wanted to share my personal color grading process in the hopes that it might help you learn the basics of color grading. Now I'm definitely not an expert color grader, but my process involves four main steps. The first step is always making sure that I nail the exposure and the white balance in my actual camera body. Now I won't go into heaps of detail in terms of settings because your camera might be different to mine, but I use the exposure meter on my preview screen to make sure that my exposure is correct. And then I also use the auto white balance feature, which enables me to just hold up a white sheet of paper or a white object in front of the camera, hit auto white balance, and then it sets it correctly. So whatever you need to do with your camera settings to make sure that you can nail both of those settings will make the post editing color grading process so much easier. So once I've got those settings correct and I've shot my video, I'll then import my footage onto my computer and bring it into Final Cut. And we'll jump onto my MacBook to go through step two. All right, so here we are on my MacBook in Final Cut. I've imported the footage as you can see. So step two is converting your raw footage to Rec. 709, which is a standard color space. So basically the way I understand it is raw footage has like a really wide color space. It has lots of color information, but you want to narrow that color information down so it's easier to grade basically. Now you can get conversion LUTs from all sorts of different places. Camera manufacturers usually will have conversion LUTs on their website. So for example, I use a Sony camera and on the Sony website, there's conversion LUTs for all the different types of cameras that Sony sells. So just download one of these LUTs and you can use that to convert your footage. I've used a conversion LUT that I bought from a YouTuber. I'll leave a link in the description, but in order to apply our conversion LUT, I'll show you how to do it. So I use adjustment layers. You don't have to use adjustment layers, but they just make it a little bit easier but you can pretty much do everything I'm doing with adjustment layers directly on the clip. You just have to do all the effects I'm doing on adjustment layers directly onto your clip. It's a little bit more complicated, so I recommend using adjustment layers if you can. So once we've got our adjustment layer ready to go, we'll go to our effects tab and search for LUT. So we've got our custom LUT effect here. So we'll just drag and drop that onto the, grade, the adjustment layer. And that hasn't changed anything up here yet because we haven't selected which LUT we want to use. So to select the LUT, we will just oh, hide this and go to our effects tab, video effects tab. And then in the custom LUT section, we will choose our conversion LUT. So wherever you've downloaded it from, you can import your custom LUT. This is the conversion LUT that I use. And as you can see, that has already changed the footage a little bit. It's added some contrast back in and changed the color a little bit. The second step is correcting your white balance and your exposure. Now I know we already did that in the camera, but you have to also correct it again with your raw footage. In order to do that, we'll get another adjustment layer and drag that on. And this time, instead of getting a custom LUT, what we will get is we'll go to the color in the effects tab and then add color wheels. Now the next thing you want to bring up in your Final Cut workspace is your uh, scopes. So to get up scopes, go command seven on your Mac and it will probably come up with a waveform view like this as default, but I use this dual view and then select the top one to be a vector scope and then the bottom one to be a waveform with RGB overlay. Don't worry about all the terms. As long as you've got these up, it will make sense. So the first thing we want to do is just bring some color back in. It's looking a bit desaturated. So I'll bump up the saturation here and make the colors look a little bit more normal and the correct saturation. So that's looking pretty good to me. 
But what you'll notice over here in the RGB overlay is that one of the colors is more dominant than the others, and that's red. If you look over here, you can actually kind of notice it, particularly in the highlights. There's this kind of red tinge in the overall image. We want to get rid of that. We want the image to be as neutral as possible so it's ready for our custom light. So to get rid of this dominant red, we just go over to the highlights and just play with, around with it a little bit. And as you can see, that moves what color is dominant in the highlights. But we don't want any color to be dominant. We want them all to be pretty much the same. So we just move this around until they're all in line with each other. And they're pretty much white here, which is what you want to see. So that's looking a lot better already. And then we'll do the same thing for the shadows. Shadows are already pretty good, so I have to do too much. And then the midtones. Same deal with them, they were already pretty good, but just a little bit of a tweak. You can play with this forever, so just do it to the best of your ability. That's looking pretty good. So overall, our, our RGB overlay is looking pretty white overall. There's no hugely dominant color, which is what we want. I'll just show you what it looks like before and after we did that. So that's after and that's before. So as you can see, obviously it brings the saturation back in, but if you look closely, particularly in these highlights, you can really see where that red tinge was, which we've taken out, which makes our overall image nice and neutral, which is what we want. So once that's done, bring up your scopes again, and we want to make our image a bit more contrasty. And generally I find when it comes to raw footage, Darkening your midtones a bit always helps bring out color a little bit. So I'll darken that a little bit and then pump up the highlights a touch. So I generally find my skin tone, which is around this sort of red area here, I want it to be between 75 and 100. So that's looking pretty good there in terms of overall exposure. I'll go a little bit higher and then plug the shadows a little bit. So I want my shadows to be just touching black to zero. So that's looking pretty good. Might move my midtones again a little bit just until it looks okay to me. That's looking pretty good. And there you go. So that's the overall image exposure and white balance corrected. And you'll notice up here, the reason I had this vector scope up is basically because this line here, which you can select here, is the skin tone indicator. So you can turn that on and off. I always have the skin tone indicator turned on. And that shows you where your skin tone should be lying in terms of color. So it's looking pretty good here. Um, if it was incorrect, so that would look more yellow. So you can see my skin looks, looks more yellow there. And it's moved off that skin tone indicator line. And same in the opposite direction. It's starting to look more purple. So it's moved off that line, but we want it to be bang on this line here, which is where it is. That means your skin color is correct. So that is that step three done. So if you hard all that, this is before and this is after. So you can see there's a huge difference, completely different. So that's pretty much how you color correct um, your image to make it look normal. But then the color grading is after that. That's the, the last step. The actual color grading itself is the very last step. So in order to do that, I'll add another adjustment layer. I'll just call it a gray layer. It's the same thing. And then all we have to do is add a, our custom LUT onto this gray layer. So I'll go into the effects, get the custom LUT effect, drag and drop it. And then same deal, go to the video effects, custom LUT and select your LUT. So you can import it. I've already imported mine. So Nick Kennel 01, Rec 709, select that. And there you go, you can see my LUT adds some blues to the shadows, which I quite like, but tries to keep the skin tone still quite warm. So once you've applied that, you can adjust the mix, which is basically just the intensity of your LUT. So I'll usually um, have my LUT between 0.7 and 1. So I'll just play with it until it looks good. I actually kind of like it quite high today. I think I'll leave it at the 1. And there you go. So that is that is after and that is before. So you can see the light actually makes a pretty big difference. But I think the thing that a lot of people don't really realize is that you can't just put a LUT like that straight onto 
raw footage. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I turn off our correction layers and conversion LUT, that's what the LUT will look like if I put it directly onto my raw footage, which is obviously not what I want, which is why you have to do the first two steps before you put your actual uh, custom LUT or do your color grading. So this is what the footage looks like completely ungraded. And then this is what the footage looks like graded. So as you can see, there's a really big difference. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And that is essentially my color grading process. Don't forget, if you wanna buy my custom LUT, you can do that. There's a link in the description. If you're interested in seeing more video editing type of content, then be sure to leave me a comment. Also, make sure you check out my creative tech playlist for more creative tech stuff. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing day today and I'll see you very soon in the next video.